Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Josh Carney. I'm the owner of Carney Media Group, but most of you guys probably know me from YouTube as Music Tech Help Guy. I wanna welcome you to my new Logic Pro 11 course, Session Players and Chord Track Explored. Throughout this course, I'll walk you through how to use the session players that were introduced in Logic Pro 11. These session players offer a way to generate drum, bass, and keyboard patterns that can be fully customized for building musical arrangements, creating demos, or integrating them into your own compositions. And these are more than just simple drag and drop loops. Virtually every detail of each session player can be fully customized or converted to MIDI. This course will include walkthroughs of the updated version of drummer, session percussionist, electronic drummer, session bass player, and session keyboard player. I'll also go a bit deeper than that by showing you how to customize drum kit designer and drum machine designer. I'll show you the basics of how to build your own chord progressions using the new chord track that the session bass player and keyboard can follow. And I'll also show you how to build out your musical arrangements. In this first video in the course, I'll take you through the basics of using the updated drummer in Logic 11 and how to make drummer follow the rhythm of other tracks. By the end of the course, we'll fully customize the session player patterns and build out a full musical arrangement. Before we get into this video, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox is a new standard for file storage, file sharing, and collaboration for musicians, bands, artists, producers, and mix engineers. Boombox allows you to upload your audio files, stems, mix bounces, and even full DAW sessions and share them with other collaborators who can then leave timestamped feedback or voice recordings on your tracks. And that's just the basics. Boombox is a full suite of collaborative tools, including Boomba AI, which is a virtual co-writer offering AI tools like splitting stems out of a stereo file, vocal removal, and it can even generate MIDI ideas for you. Pitch and share your songs, beats, or samples with a private or public playlist. Create custom artist pages with your own artist branding to share your music. Find new collaborators and clients and use song splits to manage song ownership prior to release, including professionally drafted legal contracts, ISRC codes, and more. Head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their paid plans to get more storage space and additional pro features. Now, one last thing I wanna mention about this session players course before we get started. If you want to download and watch this entire course right now without any YouTube ads or sponsored segments, head over to my website, logicproguide.com to download the entire course for only $19.99. This is a two hour course that you can download directly to your computer and take it anywhere with you. And if you don't wanna do that, no worries. You'll never get any sales pressure from me. You can still watch the whole course here for free on YouTube. Okay, so enough talk, let's get into the video. Okay, so let's start off with the drummer session player. And since Logic 10.8, they've made some pretty huge improvements to drummer. And when you select drummer here, and then you can go to drummer style here, you'll see that there's actually three different types of drummers. You have acoustic drummers. These all use the drum kit designer instrument. Electronic drummers, which use the drum machine designer instrument. And then you have some various sort of auxiliary percussionists. This is what you'd use if you wanted to grab some shakers or some tambourine or something like that. Let's start off with one of the acoustic drummers. I'm gonna go with the indie pop player. And all of these drummers all have different playing styles and different presets and even different kits, but you can customize the kits. So if there's like a particular drummer that you really like, but you don't like the kit that's associated with that drummer, you can actually change that. And I'll show you how to do that uh, in another video. Okay, so I'm gonna click create, and this is going to add a session player region right here on the timeline. Now, one thing I just want to point out here is when you right click or control click out here, instead of saying create drummer region, this now says create session player region. And you can also do this up here by going to track and you'll see new session player SI track. So this will create another session player track for you. And lastly, you can click on the plus button here to create a uh, session player region as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna select this and then press Command U to set the cycle range to it. And you'll see it automatically opens up the session player editor. You can hide and show this by pressing E, or you can just simply double click on any session player region. So 
So pretty simple beat. If you want to change up the pattern preset, you can go to the preset menu right here and you'll see there's a bunch of different presets we can choose from. Let's go with this one. And let's try one more. Let's go back to that first preset. Now, if you want to change the drummer in Logic 11, you no longer need to do this from the library. You can actually do it down here in the session player editor. So you'll see acoustic drummer and then the style of that drummer. If you click on that, you can choose a different playing style here. The one thing that you have to be careful of is you're going to want to go here and select acoustic, electric, or percussionist. So if you're looking for a percussionist, that's where you're going to find that. But you also have to keep in mind that you can actually turn any drummer session player region into a bass player session region uh, just by selecting it here. So you could technically have a drum, you know, a track with a drum kit on it, but you're using a bass player uh, region. Uh, we don't want to do that. Another thing you can do here is if you turn off this option that says change patch, and you go in here and you uh, customize the drum uh, kit designer kit. For example, let's say I wanna grab a different kick drum here. There we go. And if I change over to a different drummer style, say I'll use the pop rock drummer, as long as change patch is off, this will preserve the settings of the drum kit. So it's the same kick there. However, if you have this option turned on and you change over to another drummer, like hard rock here, it's actually going to swap out the drum kit as well. So if you want to keep your drum kit, but you want to switch the drummer style, you're going to make sure that this change patch option is turned off. Okay, so let's go back to the indie pop drummer here. Now, in the earlier versions of Drummer, there was a big XY pad, and this has been replaced by these complexity and intensity sliders. So intensity is going to be your overall dynamic. Is it gonna be louder? Is it gonna be softer? Is it going to be more complex or less complex? So you'll see with more complexity, there's more notes added, pull it back, and it's gonna be a much simpler pattern. So this is like a simple, soft pattern. or I can pull up the intensity to add some more volume to that. And it's not just volume, it's the performance velocity of the instrument. With these sample-based instruments, you're gonna find that they're deeply sampled with different velocity layers. So having louder or softer velocities will actually trigger different samples to be played. It's not just a volume control. Okay, in the center here, there are some pattern options. Um, let's check out this bottom one here. So if you click on the kick drum and turn that off, this will be a pattern without a kick in it. But you'll see it, it will add in a kick here and there, usually like on the down beats. And the same thing goes if I turn off the snare, now it's only going to add snare in the fills but the majority of the pattern is just gonna have kick in it with no snare. Or if you just want the hi-hats and the fills in there, you can turn off the kick and the snare. Okay, let's bring both of those back in. And if you click here, you'll get eight presets for kick and snare patterns. So the bottom dot is showing you in 16th notes what uh, the kick pattern is going to be. And the top line is the same thing in 16th notes, what the snare line is going to be. And you'll see that some of these are small dots, some are dark large dots, others are grayed out large dots. This is essentially just showing you the probability of a note appearing there. So if it's a dark large circle, you're going to pretty much always get a note there. And if it's a gray large circle, there's a chance that there may be a note there, or it may just be like a ghost note or something that's at a softer velocity. And things can happen in between these defined notes here in the pattern, but that's all gonna play off of what your complexity settings are. So let's try out a couple different kick and snare patterns here.
Okay, so I'm gonna go with something fairly simple here. I'll go with pattern one. And down here at the bottom of this patterns dialog, you can have the kick and snare pattern follow either the rhythm of the chord track, which we haven't gotten to yet, so don't worry about that for now, or you can have it follow the rhythm of another track. So let's say that I pull in some other instrument, whether it be MIDI or audio, maybe it's a recording you made with a guitar or bass, or maybe it's just a loop. Let me just pull in a bass loop here. Let's grab this one called Combustion Bass Guitar. Let's drag that in here. Maybe let's speed this up a bit. Let's go like 115. Now, if I want the kick and snare pattern to follow the rhythm of this loop, all I have to do is go down here, and then now under track, I can select the combustion bass guitar. And so now the kick and snare pattern, it's gonna follow the pattern that you select, but it's really going to follow the loop. So it's gonna use the original pattern as a suggestion, but then also uh, make sure that the kick and snare notes snap onto the transients in the bass. Okay, so that's the basics of using Drummer to generate simple acoustic drum patterns and how to make the kick and snare follow other tracks in your Logic projects. In part two, we'll dive deeper into customizing your drum patterns with hi-hat, cymbals, toms, fills, and other advanced features. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.